This is the Batman theory, or how the average Gotham citizen can deduce the Dark Knight's true identity. Who is the Batman? As we, the audience, know, is Bruce Wayne. But what if you were just the average Gotham citizen? How difficult would it be to figure out Batman's true ID? Answer, not very. It would take minimal effort if somebody wanted to take this up as a hobby. First off, follow the money. Bruce Wayne is a, and a small group of others are the wealthiest people in Gotham. The Wayne family has been established as the wealthiest city elite in the series. The rest of Gotham is in a constant state of de economic depression like Detroit. Then there's the cost of his gadgets. As people are well aware, Batman has a wide array of gadgets to fight crime. From the Batmobile to various weapons, costumes, and armor that the general public has seen. Even if Batman makes his own weapons, gadgets, and suits, it would probably can't cost him millions of dollars, especially when you take into account the fact that he has a gadget for every situation. If it is your average Joe Gotham amassing this material, wouldn't their loved ones get curious about all that stuff in their home and the cost of it? Wayne Enterprises is a powerful corporation that has many functions and different subsidiaries in various different industries. So Bruce Wayne has the ability to gather, order, and assemble his crime-fighting materials in a piecemeal fashion, and no one would question the CEO of a powerful corporation about what he purchases. And Batman can't use police the police crime lab to conduct his investigations as the world's greatest detective, because all the police are ordered to arrest the Batman on site with the exception of Commissioner Gordon. This means that Batman's analytic and crime lab work needs to be done in a private and hidden location away from the prying eyes of any government agencies. Wayne Manor, as mentioned, is outside the city limits and sits on a lot of land which can secretly house a lab either on the property, secretly within the manor itself, or on the subsidiary buildings that make up Wayne Enterprises. Batman has, the, has to have a lot of free time to operate, and Bruce Wayne's wealth means he doesn't have to worry about a day job. He shows up simply to keep up appearances on occasion. He can go for days without being heard from, and that should arouse suspicion because he's a wealthy local celebrity that is a prominent fixture in the local media. Yet the various encounters Batman has with his rogue gallery, rogues gallery of villains, he has spent time recovering from various injuries, and sometimes for days and weeks at a time. This coincides with the missing Bruce Wayne. Alfred's excuses can only cover so much before people begin connecting the dots about Bruce Wayne's mysterious scars, bruises, and various absences. Everyone in Gotham knows about Bruce's tragic past, as it has been meticulously documented. And besides Alfred, he doesn't have any other family or close friends. If this, was, if this was a normal person that does have a family and friends, it means there's a greater chance of his secret getting out by someone finding a stray batter in him, for example. And there would be way more questions about his nocturnal activities. Whenever Bruce is at a high-class social event that gets attacked, he disappears, only for the Batman to show up moments later. Bruce Wayne has a lot of confidence in himself, and what I mean by this is that he's a billionaire in a crime-ridden city and has, and doesn't have any bodyguards to protect him, just an elderly butler. Shouldn't someone of his tragic background and his social stature be more concerned with their own personal safety? He clearly can afford the type of protection, and the rest of, of the rich people of Gotham have the same. So Bruce... So Bruce Wayne is either naive and arrogant, or just confident that he can handle himself in dangerous situations. And after years of training with the League of Shadows, Bruce can certainly take down any adversary. And the Batman would have to be relatively young and in fantastic shape, especially when he first starts out. Batman's war on crime is a 30-year endeavor. Conclusion? Bruce Wayne must be Batman because there are too many coincidences to ignore. Batman must be wealthy in order to afford everything in his crime fighting arsenal and give him free time to operate. He is young enough to spend years training and acquiring the knowledge to effectively fight crime and having a tragic reason to want to begin a crime fighting crusade 
is great motivation and a pretty useful idea. Thank you.